Number one says the number of hours worked and the total dollars earned have a strong positive relationship. Explain what it means to have a strong positive relationship. So there's two different parts to the relationship. One is whether it's strong or weak, and the other is whether it's positive or negative. So when we're writing about this, you wanna write about both portions. So the word strong, since it is a strong relationship, this means that its model is close to linear. So if you were to plot all of the points, the points would be pretty close to a straight line. And then the fact that it's positive means that when the number of hours increases, so when your X value increases, so does the Y, so does the amount of money. So strong means it's close to linear, which means your model is gonna be good. Um, So the model is going to be pretty accurate. Um, and then the fact that it's positive means as the X increases, in this case, the number of hours, then the Y increases, in this case, the total dollars. Number two, the number of minutes on the phone and the customer satisfaction rating have a weak negative relationship. Okay, so in this case, we're at a weak negative relationship. So what does this mean? And so in this case, with a weak relationship, this means that the model won't accurately estimate the satisfaction rate rating. So since the relationship is weak, the model, meaning the line of best fit, won't accurately represent, won't very accurately and then since it's negative This means that as the X increases, so as the minutes on the phone increase, the Y decreases. So in this case, the customer satisfaction decreases. So in a positive, as the X increases, so does the Y. In a negative, as the X increases, the other variable decreases. So as the X, in this case, as the minutes on the phone increases, then the satisfaction decreases. Number three, you need to make a line of best fit for this data. So you'll need your calculator or a website that you're using to, to calculate line of best fit. So in your if you're using a graphing calculator or the graphing calculator app on your phone, you'll click stat and then you'll edit your list, which is number one. So type in your list, make sure that all of your numbers are accurate. Now, this one wants your line of best fit, and it's also going to want the correlation coefficient. So when you're calculating this, so then you go to stat over to calculate, oops, and then you pick number four, the linear regression. So when you do this, if you don't have the, the R squared and the R value, you need to turn your diagnostics on. 
And the way you do this is going into the catalog of your calculator. And you'll see the word catalog right above the zero. And it's in blue. So you need to hit the blue button first. So second zero will get you into your catalog. And then you can just scroll down until you get to diagnostics. And so then when you see diagnostics, whoops, I went past it. Okay, then when you see diagnostics, you'll see that there's a button to turn them off and there's a button to turn them on. So you would wanna click diagnostics on and hit enter. Now when you calculate your linear regression model, your R value will be there. So here's the data. So I'm just gonna screenshot this um, and paste it over into my window here. And so this one doesn't tell us what we need to round the decimals to. So you can just kind of pick. I'm going to do two. So I'm going to say y equals 1.25x and then minus 2.79 for the um, y-intercept. And then the correlation coefficient is your R value. So just this one. And so again, you can round to whatever decimal place you want. Since it didn't say, I would round at least to two decimal places. So you could do 0.96, or if you wanted to do 0.955, that would be fine as well. Number four, Elena collects data to investigate the relationship between the number of bananas that she buys and the total cost of the bananas. Which value for the co correlation coefficient is most likely to match the line of best fit for this. So you want to think about how closely related the number of bananas she buys and how much she pays for them is related. And this is going to be very strongly related, right? If she buys one banana, the cost is going to be pretty low. I don't know, like 29 cents. Okay, then if she buys two, then this is going to go up, probably double the cost, right? Because each one costs about the same unless they're going by, by weight. Um, but so they're going to be relatively close to the same. As this goes up, so is this. So as the number she buys goes up, so does the cost. So it's going to be strong and positive. Number five, a researcher creates a scatter plot that displays the relationship between the number of years in business and the percentage of the company's business that is fair trade. The researcher creates a line of best fit modeled by this situation or this equation and wants to find the residuals for the companies that have been in business for three years. So here's the two companies. So we would want to plug three in and figure out what the model gives us, right? So the model, we would plug in three and see what it tells us it's going to be. And so when we do this, we get 0 0.273. So 0 0.273 plus 0 0.6, whoops, 0 0.06. And so then we get that the estimated value here is going to be um, 0.333. So this is going to say that they're going to do, um, you know, about 0.333% of their business is going to be fair trade. So then we just want to compare that to each company. So now we'll go and look here. So this company, and remember for residuals, the way you find residuals is you do the actual measurement minus the estimate or from the equation. So for this company, it's going to be the actual, which is 0.42 minus the estimate, which was 0.33. And that's going to get you a residual here of 0 0.087. So there's our first residual for that first company. And then the second company, the actual measurement was 0 0.3. 
So then we'll subtract off the estimated value at 0.333. And we get um, that this residual is negative 0.033. So then B asks us to compare these two companies or compare what these residuals mean. So we can see um, that in this one company is conducting more business than the more fair trade business than the other, right? So we see this one is it has more fair trade because this one's above the actual um, or this one's above the estimate. So this one's above the estimate and this one is below the estimate. So that means that this one is doing more fair trade business and we can see that here. We can see that they're doing 0.42 versus 0.3. Um, and then we can see that one is above the, the estimate or the average amount of fair trade and one is below. So you just would wanna write that. I don't know if you wanna name these and give them a company name or if you just wanna say one company. So. I'm just gonna say the first company is doing more fair trade business than the average, meaning the model. And the second company is doing less fair trade than the average. The first company is also doing more fair trade business. But I would say this last thing doesn't really have to do with the residuals, right? Because you could see that from these points. You already know this one is doing more than that one. But now you know the first one is above the estimated value and the second one is below. All right, number six, which correlation coefficient or the correlation coefficient is given for several different linear models? Which correlation coefficient indicates the worst fit? So we want this to be furthest away from one or negative one, and that would be A. So A is very close to zero, which is the furthest you can get from one or negative one for our values. Number seven, which of the following is the best estimate of the correlation coefficient for the line of best fit shown? So for this one, we can see that from left to right, it's going down. So that means it's going to be negative, which means you can rule out these two. And then this is not super strong because the dots are not very close to this line. They're spread out versus if they were all right next to the line. So that tends to tell us that the correlation coefficient is not very close to negative one. So negative 0.4 would make sense there.